It's Freedom Day for these seven scarlet macaws. They were placed in an aviary on Sunday to be released into the wild. For five of them, their start was a rocky one. They were collected by Guatemalan poachers for the thriving illegal pet trade across the border. But quick action by the rangers helped to rescue them. They spent the past three months at the Belize Wildlife and Referral Clinic, where they were prepared to be released back into the wild. That included an evaluation and transfer to the field laboratory, where they were hand-fed. When they were over two months old, they were then taken to a cage where they got to flap their wings and move around. And once they reached 85 days old, they were transferred to an aviary. There, they learned how to fly, perch, and become independent eaters. Fruits that we find in the wild that we know the wild macaws are uh, feed on, so we go into the jungle, collect this type of, of wild food, and bring to the aviary, put them on the branches uh, of trees, or hang them uh, uh, all over the cage, and the macaws will start to fly and feed independently. At the beginning, uh, it's total chaos. Uh, they, when they start to fly, they will flap their wings, drop on the ground, climb up again, uh, the trees. Uh, so it's a, a learning process, like a kid going to school. No? It's the same for, uh, for scarlet macaw chicks. It's a learning process. And when we do the soft release by this time, the, the chicks uh, have developed their flight ability, perching ability, and foraging independence. So those are the three criteria that we look and chicks must have before we decide to open the, the, the aviary for them to, to venture into the wild surrounding. But going back into the Chickabool forest for these macaws doesn't mean that they're safe. Inside the Chickabool, they face a number of threats. The macaws, particularly the eggs and chicks, are targeted by birds of prey. And because they use softwood trees for nesting, those are easily destroyed, so they also experience nesting habitat loss. But the biggest threat is the poaching. In Guatemala, the illegal pet trade is booming. Poachers risk their lives for the scarlet macaw because this is a prized bird in the illegal pet trade. This bird fetches high prices on the market, and so the poachers make big bucks. But to get them, they need to come into Belize and poach the birds from our forest. And at one time of the monitored nest that we have, let's say we monitored 10 nests for breeding season. At one time, we had a poaching rate of 90%. So that means that nine out of the 10 nests that we were monitoring were last due to poaching. And that's a huge blow to a wild population with only 250 in the individual. A well-feathered chick uh, will fetch around 3,000 quetzales. That is what the poacher will get. If the chick is not feathered, it could get maybe 800 quetzales because they're in the probability that the chick may die, not survive into that young. Uh, but there are reports that uh, people who traffic the, the chicks, let's say from the poacher, direct poacher in the chickable, the middleman, will make double that. So he will be getting like 8,000 quetzales for a macachic in Guatemala City or other departments away from the Petén. So you see, and that middle person will uh, sell it to another person and the chain goes. So uh, we don't know exactly what is the price uh, that the uh, owners of wild macaws are paying to, to get uh, one chicken. But still, this is big, in a sense, big money for, for these poachers. Yes, it's, it's big money. And if, if, if you uh, consider their uh, income, uh, it's minimal. And uh, most of these poachers are below the poverty line. So if they could fetch 800 quetzales, 3,000 quetzales in 15 days of work, that is like winning uh, the lottery. No? A 2019 scarlet macaw census puts the number of wild scarlet macaws at around 350. With an already endangered status, an increase in threats can cause the population to dwindle. Due to limited resources, the FCD only monitors a fraction of the nests in the Chickabull Forest. So for a wild population to have 350 individuals, that is a critical number. 
So every bird, every wild uh, makachik that we could put into the wild uh, population uh, is, is helpful to the overall population. So, and on average, we are monitoring uh, 11 nests. That is uh, a lot if you consider um, 350, but I am for sure that that is not all the nests that are out in the, in the chicky bull. No? Um, over the last four to five breeding seasons, from 2015, we had managed to reduce poaching of the monitor nest to a zero percent. So we were not losing any scarlet macaw chicks to poachers of monitor nests. But we started to document using um, other technology, no, to document that poachers were still stealing scarlet macaw chicks from from the wild, and at one point, we estimated that over 20 scarlet macaw chicks were taken from, uh, from the chicken bull in one season. If I am losing more than 50% of my chicks, that will have, eventually, will lead to a decline in the scarlet macaw population in, in Belize. And with a critical number of 250 at this point, uh, that, that alone is something to, to uh, take into consideration and start to, to see how we start to monitor and prevent poaching of the other scarlet macaw nests that we cannot uh, monitor. No? Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.